Welcome back to the Channel 10 rooftop. Now, love is love and family is family. That's the message the team at My Forever Family hopes to spread with a new campaign to encourage members of the LGBTI community to become foster parents. Now, Brendan and Paul Upcroft, who are sitting at our desk now, they began fostering their two sons four and a half years ago, and they join us now to share their story. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you. Hey. Tell us Very much. the story of Aidan and Caleb. They were quite a bit older when you, when you first started fostering so them. So when we made the decision to become foster parents, we targeted school-aged children because they, they are the forgotten market, so to speak, in um, foster care and adoption. Um, we also wanted a sibling group because kids um, with sibling groups seem to be too daunting to a lot of people. So you mean they're brothers? So, yes, yes, they're biological they are brothers. brothers. Biological brothers. Um, so we selected that as our criteria for the children that we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so they'd been in the system for five years before we've taken Aww. them on. So by the time the adoption was finalised in March last year, they've been in the system for just short of 10 years. Wow. Like you said, this is a, a, a totally forgotten issue in Australia that's lying beneath. We've got 55,000 kids in out-of-home care. Mm. Any parent, it makes your stomach turn to think yep. of that. That's right. What made you guys decide to become uh, foster parents over other things? IVF. And yep. also, um, and, 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 and are you able to become permanent parents now? Is there, is there enough certainty in the foster system? Because that's a massive problem as well, isn't it? Two questions so there. Two questions there. Okay, well, <laughs> the, I've got more. <laughs> the first one, um, we started talking about having a family six months after we met, and foster care was the initial process that we thought about because of the fact that it gave a home to a child in need. Yep. We then, for various reasons, went through the thought process looking at lots of different um, ideas, surrogacy and co-parenting. We came back to um, foster care because at that stage there were 48,000 kids yep. in foster care um, needing homes, 20,000 of those in New South Wales were, um, alone, and that um, was an opportunity to give a child who already existed a home. That was the first part of your question. Yeah, well, well I guess and the, the reason why I asked both will, will is because... Will they stay with you? That's right, will they stay with you? Because yeah. that's what put a lot so of people they, they're now adopted. Yeah. yeah. So we have adopted. So Bernardo's, who our agency is, um, foster to adopt. That is their program. So it's not a child lingering forever in care. As I said, the boys were in care for five years before us. They had ten moves before Jeez. us. Yeah. So Now, unfair. you think mm. Aidan was ten when he came to us. Ten moves at ten years of age. What adult goes through that it's much movement trauma. in their life? The trauma, the um, disjointed connections. So mm. it's it's heartbreaking to to have heard our son's stories when they came to us and what they've been through. Mm. Yeah. Now you've been a couple for ten years. You've been married since last September. Yay. Yay. I love that. Yep. Now, do you feel any uh, stigma from anywhere uh, being a rainbow family, as it were? Are those days in the past? They, they are in the past. There's still a portion of the community who are going to stand by that strong belief that only a, a male and a female can raise children. We live in rural New South Wales and our, our family has been completely accepted by the school, by the community organisations. Um, so it has changed, yes, and there are more and more rainbow families occurring in Australia every day. Um, thanks partly to the, the um, fostering process and the fact that they've been so supportive of rainbow families. So I think that it is changing. And what about the boys? What do they think about having two dads? It's no different <laughs> because their mum is still there. They see their birth mum 12 times a year, plus wow. phone calls for birthdays and Christmas, emails. Um, and we, a lot of foster carers, when they're going into it, are scared of, oh, my God, they're going to see their birth parent, they're going to hate us and when they come back and all that. We've included the boys' mum into their lives. So not a separate visit somewhere locked away for two hours. Aidan became school captain. Come to his oh. captain sing. It was an additional visit, but it was natural. It's, she's part of their life. She shares their achievements just like we do. Oh. So it's like an extended blended family that includes her as well. And it does take you a village. Yes. It, it does. You right. really are. Yep. Yep. Um, now, for more information on how you can change the life of a child in need of love and a happy home, go to My Forever Family. .org.au. Brendan and Paul, you are Aww. adorable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Love God. to your boys. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Now, still to come is the so-called retirement.